So I just got back from work, right? Got back from work. I stopped off at a school. I'd have my detector, my knee pads, my bag, my shovel. And I got off work early and I stopped off at a school and I forgot my freaking camera. So I had to come all the way back home and they've been repairing my sidewalk in front of my house. This is my house here. And they've been repairing my sidewalk, you know, all the way down. They've been just doing small little sections. And then when I got back in my car here, these guys pull up and they're, they're digging the sidewalk out across the street from me. They have a big pile of concrete over there. I'll show you. They're over there working. They got a big pile of concrete over there. And I'm gonna hit that on my way back home uh, when I get home here. But that's exciting. You know? <laughs> Curb strips are really awesome, man. So are sidewalk tear outs. Sidewalk tear outs have been really good to me throughout the years, man. When they tear out streets or when they tear out sidewalk strips, man, in old areas, in old neighborhoods, man, it's a treasure trove underneath them. The last few curb strips that I've done haven't really been very good, but I haven't been able to drive around the city for too much the last few months because um, I've been working. I've been working 40 hours a week. And normally, you know, when I didn't have a job for, uh, you know, a while there, um, I, I would just drive around the city and I would look for them wherever they're at, wherever they're working. And um, on my city website, they have like a map that shows you the streets that they're working on. And it shows, uh, it shows, it highlights the areas um, on the map, what they're doing to the areas. Like if they're doing utility work, if they're uh, tearing the street out, if they're overlaying, um, if they're putting asphalt in, if they're putting in street lights. Uh, I look for those types of situations. Um, whenever they put in new street lights, Sometimes they rip up the corners there and they take that dirt and they spread it out across a curb strip. And I found a few dimes, a few uh, silver dimes there that way, just in the piles that they dig up, like the stuff that they're digging up right now. They're probably gonna take that concrete out of there today, but the dirt that's on that concrete, um, sometimes there's dimes just right there on the surface. I've found so many wheat, I mean, a lot of wheat pennies and silver coins just baking in the sun and I just talked to them guys he said, oh you, you find stuff underneath the concrete I, I told them you know I walked over there just a minute ago I told them well I'm, I'm gonna metal tech this I, I asked them when they're gonna put the rock in if they're gonna put the rock in today no we're gonna come tomorrow and put the rock in I said okay I'll, I'll metal tech it tonight when I get back from metal teching and he said oh you find stuff underneath there I said oh, yeah man this is an old neighborhood right all these homes behind me are from the 19 the teens and the 20s and I found a lot of silver on the street on my street right here that I live on just in my next door neighbors um, my next door neighbors front curb strip just on that little strip there I found three silvers I found a silver dime a silver ring and a huge silver pendant a big silver pendant it's like a religious pendant and uh, the silver ring was still sterling so was the silver pendant it was a big one. I mean, it was about the size of a, uh, uh, it was about the size of a half dollar. It was a big religious pendant on both sides. Um, and a silver, a Merc I think it was a Roosevelt dime. I found a Roosevelt dime there. And I found a few other silvers on the other side of the street, um, down about four houses. And then um, up from where I live at, down two blocks the other way behind the camera there, that's Silver Street. And I found, I think I found 19 silvers there in the last four years, just on one street, on one side of the street, on one curb strip. I think it's like three houses I found 19 silvers. When I first got the Simplex, I was just spanking more silvers out that the, my, my other machines just missed because there was too much iron, right? And they were deep. They were like nine inches deep, eight or nine inches deep. Um, I haven't really found a lot of deep silvers lately because I've been using my small coils. I've just been wanting to get a lot of jewelry. Um, and the curb strips uh, have, were so dry this summer, I just wasn't able to, I wasn't really able to do curb strips because curb strips, um, they're just, 
there's a small window of opportunity to do curb strips because it can't be too dry and it can't be soaking like raining super wet you know um, I don't want to make a big mess on the curb strips and when it's super dry out you know I just can't dig very good plugs you know uh, it just makes a mess it's super crumbly and um, and I don't, I don't want to kill the grass you know because if you do dig a plug um, at certain times of the year in my soil um, like in the summertime you will kill the grass no matter how big of a plug you make you know uh, you just can't metal detect um, that's the time when I go and do parks because parks they water every day um, some schools they they water every day too um, and it just stays green you know it doesn't matter how what kind of plugs you make at schools it's just always soft really moist soil but in curb strips people just let their curb strips go you know for the summer and they just let it kind of die out but if you dig um, in the winter time when it's super muddy out you just trample the, their lawn out and when it's frozen out like when it's frosty um, and you walk on grass um, that's frozen underneath you kind of kill the grass you know uh, matting uh, when you kneel down on grass when it's frozen out it can tend to really hurt the grass you know I've 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 went back to every spot that I go to, I come back a few days later and look how I did, you know, look, look at, um, look at how I did, um, make sure I didn't make a mess, make sure the grass isn't dead, um, and make sure the area is, is clean, clean, you know, um, a few days later or the next week. And every time I get done with a certain area, I always make sure that I fill my plugs back in, make sure there's no dirt too much dirt on the surface um, especially for curb strips because curb strips are really I mean people people really get um, pissy if you leave their curb strip all messy um, that's a really quick way to um, you know uh, have your access denied on the curb strips it is public property but they can you know just ban it all together they can just ban it um, on curb strips a lot of cities in my area um, around me uh, have there's no metal detecting curb strips. And I'm sure you have run in the same situations where, wherever you live at, um, there's a lot of restrictions. And lately there, there's been a lot of restrictions on metal detecting, like the schools. There's, there's not really any rules on the schools um, right now, but the security guards have been saying, oh, you know, it's been a rule for a year or something. I, I'm not really sure, but um, I'm, I'm still continuing to do the schools. Um, I'm just, uh, there's no rules on, there's no like signs posted. There's no rules on the administrative rules on the, uh, the, the, uh, the, the, uh, the school district here. And there's no rules. There's no pro, um, there's no, um, ban on curb strips right now and a couple cops are kind of get kind of crappy about it because they come out so often with metal detectorists you know if so many people have it um, call the cops on these metal detectorists who are on the curb strips um, but there's there's uh, the curb strips are just a treasure trove of silver coins relics jewelry because people park here you know if you look down the street man everybody parks there and if you can get a one-way street, if you can get a one-way street, and if you can get to where um, that left side, if, if a person parks on the left side, on the driver's side, you know, you might live in uh, Europe, and they drive on the right side, and if they park on the right side, and they get out of the car, you have you have a better chance of finding more coins and more relics on the driver's side of the vehicle when they get out. And if it's lawn or, or if it's grass or something, you have a higher chance of getting it because that driver's side door opens up and somebody gets out of that driver's side guaranteed every time. And if there's grass right there, right at the driver's side, if, you, if it's like a one-way street, that's the ticket, man. I found massive, massive coin spills on curb strips on one-way streets on the left-hand side of the street. I live in the United States and we drive on the left-hand side of the street. And those curb strip, it's like a median, you know. If you don't know what medians are, this is the median or a curb strip. This is the right-of-way, the easement. This is actually city property. You know, the, 
the homeowners have to maintain it, but it is city property just in case if they want to widen the street out or all these sewer lines, all the, the utility lines, um, all these the sidewalk is owned by the city too. And sometimes, um, sometimes if the concrete is so bad, the homeowner is responsible for this, this, uh, this sidewalk right here. You know, if, if you damage it, in any way like this this part of the sidewalk right in our driveway here we are responsible for this this driveway right here we're responsible for this you know we have to maintain this area even though the city owns it we are responsible for this 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 sidewalk and this this um this area right here you know except for the utility lines you're you're responsible for for um for everything that goes up to your house from from your meter to your house, uh, the homeowner is, is liable for anything that happens to that. From the meter to the street, the city owns the, all that stuff. And the city owns this strip of property right here too. And they own this sidewalk, but we have to maintain it, right? And if you just go and tear somebody's curb strip up, you know, um, that's not good, that's not it's not not giving metal detectors a good name and they'll eventually start banning banning you um uh, there'll, there'll be restrictions um on metal detecting curb strips in your city if you continue to do that if the cops get called a lot you know and i i've had cops call on me so many times just unreal and i'm i'm calm you know um if you have somebody en encounter you or if they get in your face or um you know, they call the police on you, don't have a problem with it, man. Because I don't want somebody tearing my curb strip up either. I don't want somebody coming and ripping my lawn apart um, if, you, if you're not digging clean plugs. I mean, I do curb strips because my holes, my, my plugs are very clean. I don't leave anything behind. You can't even tell I was there. And if you leave a big mess, you are definitely gonna be banned. The, the, uh, the city is gonna have rules. They're gonna have regulations on uh, metal detecting curb strips and even the parks too you know if you mess the parks up if you leave big holes or if, if you um if you uh destroy some uh sprinkler heads i don't know if you guys know what sprinkler heads are but sprinkler heads are you know the sprinkler system that is underneath the ground there and if you destroy those heads um the city has to come come and replace those in parks and schools the the homeowners re responsible for the curb the curb strips spring, sprinklers and the curb strips because they put them in you know um and when you're in curb strips you really got to watch out um in the median you really got to watch out for people's um uh sprinkler heads and you just got to know where they're at you know once you hit one you know when, once you detect one you'll realize you know that is how how or far far apart from the far from the curb it is they're usually about right here about about this far from the curb the curb right here and they're every 10 feet some some curb strips have them every four feet <laughs> you know i don't know why you need uh, sprinkler heads every four feet but the curb strips are hardcore man you have to deal with a lot of stuff a lot of emi a lot of dog poop a lot of people um having problems with you metal detecting the curb strips because um they think it's their property a lot of people think it's their property but it's not but i always respect their their um their their uh, their medians even though it's owned by the city i respect their lawn that they're maintaining um because they fertilize it they mow it they edge it you know and usually those those curb strips um those those the, this this median right here usually um the ones that look really nice and they look really flat and they look um they look maintained really you know uh you can tell that a like a crew comes out every week um if they have some landscapers come out to it usually those curb strips don't have anything in, in them anyway because it's been ripped apart and they've cleared out all, a lot of soil and they put sod down um so i just usually skip those curb strips and and why dig in a curb strip that's really nice and clean because um i don't want to take that risk of making a mess or um you know having the homeowner come out and scream at me the curb strips that are really hard to dig in and the curb strips that are all bumpy and rough and the ones that have all this crab grass and the clover and that you know the kind of dead spots in it and they're kind of bumpy and the curb strips that are all mossy those are the curb strips to look for 
or the ones that have dates on them, some of the corners um, of the curb strips on the corners of the street, they have actual dates on them, especially in my city. Um, they have dates on them, a lot of them were like from the teens, you know, 19... 08, 09 to 1915 to 1918, there's dates on them and it says the guy's name on it who poured that concrete. And I really like those curb strips. You, those curb strips that have the dates on them, um, I, I usually have really good results. A lot of silver coins, a lot of jewelry, lot of, um, a lot of relics deep in those curb strips. But when you dig deep in curb strips, you really, you really can't make a mess, man. You have to have a shovel. And if you try to use a hand digger, I mean, a lot of people say, oh, I can, I can dig clean plugs with a hand digger. Yeah, you can. But you know what? If you have a shovel, you can make it way faster and way cleaner. Um, because if you have to dig deeper in a curb strip with that hand digger, there's nowhere to put that dirt. And if you put it on a towel, you're spending a lot of time on that towel. Um, getting that stuff back in the plug there. You know, I have really soft soil here. You know, it's a little bit compacted for most of the year. Um, like in the summertime, I, I don't really dig in the curb strips. I can't, you know, it's just too, it's hard as a rock here. You know, it's like concrete almost. The, the grass here is like concrete in the, in the summertime. But this year I didn't really get to dig in curb strips because um, the summer was so long and then it just transitioned over pouring down rain every day and I just, I just wasn't able to do this the, uh, the curb strips this fall, you know. And now that um, there's just so much rain, I mean, today it's sunny. You know, this is I, this is probably the one of the t ten days that we have that sunny in the winter time. We do not get this much sun this year. You know, this year it was like it was uh, it was sunny. It was sunny probably for 250 days this year, um, maybe 300 days this year. Um, it's just really abnormal weather that we've been having. I think that's why we've had that the, uh, the forest fires this year too, um, just because it was sunny so many days. Well, I'm gonna get out metal detecting. I'm gonna stop talking. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe.